here we are with these warm, uh, welcoming remarks, uh, the setting offered by President Reif. Well, it wouldn't truly be a kickoff without a fantastic keynote speaker. And I'm certain that when this speaker was a young girl, uh, perhaps middle school or high school, uh, she didn't think then that she would be a world-renowned author of a book uh, called Designing Social Robots, but she is. And at some point along her journey, uh, she developed skills and abilities through uh, access to her subjects. She encountered people, whether in her own personal life or maybe a little bit further away, that inspired her. And eventually found herself on a path uh, toward a subject area involving artificial intelligence and is doing amazing work at MIT, leading and founding and directing the personal robots group at MIT's Media Lab, uh, socializing a robot. Uh, who would even uh, think that this would be uh, an, an effort and that what she is doing with her partners there a true, is truly impactful uh, to health and wellness, to education, to pediatrics, to aging. And it is such a, a pleasure to know that this is all happening in our backyard uh, at MIT, not too far uh, from where you live as students or where you're getting educated. And to be able to know that you are so close uh, to someone of her abilities, but someone who cares so much. I wanna thank uh, uh, Dr. Brazil, not only for your leadership and for the work that you do that's amazing, but for understanding and sincerely uh, carving out a significant amount of your time and your effort uh, to engage young people across our Commonwealth uh, with this opportunity. You know, thinking about how to use I2 Learning and create robot kits because you're not able to physically get together to do these perhaps at MIT assembling these kits and shipping them out to students um, all across our Commonwealth so that they could have a hands-on virtual experience uh, during STEM week and throughout this school year is truly impactful. You clearly are paying it forward and we're quite honored, all of us, uh, to be able to introduce uh, Dr. Cynthia, Cynthia Brazil to all of you. With that, Dr. Brazil. Great. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. It is uh, such a pleasure to be able to share um, some new and exciting work um, that MIT has been doing all about research and outreach and dissemination for K-12 AI education. So we've heard STEM is everywhere. We know that AI is also everywhere. Um, it is transforming economies and markets. It's contributing to the global economy is creating new jobs, but it's also disrupting existing jobs. So a lot of excitement and opportunity, but it hasn't been without its challenges as well. And we've been discovering and learning that if AI kind of gets out there unchecked, it turns out that it can encode the biases of societies and cultures. And if that happens, the decisions it makes can actually privilege certain groups over others. We don't want that to happen, obviously. We also know that today the field of AI is not particularly diverse or inclusive. And we also really wanna change that to be able to make the opportunity in this incredible new field much more equitable. So this is the world, honestly, right now that our children are growing up and they are touching and using AI every day and they often don't even realize it. It's in YouTube, it's in Snapchat, it's in social media. So you know, we at MIT have come to just recognize that you know, it's no longer enough for kids, and I would say for citizens, to be digitally literate, they need to be AI literate. And we say AI literate, this is what we mean. We want society, we want our citizens to be able to use AI responsibly. To do that, they need to understand it more. They need to be able to participate in the democratic process around these technologies. And we want to prepare a far more diverse and inclusive group um, of students to have the potential to become the ethical designers of AI solutions of tomorrow. So faculty, research scientists, graduate students, undergraduate students, 
have all come together from across the media lab, from the Schwarzman College of Computing, from Open Learning to really pursue and deliver on this, on this mission. So we are coming together. Our ambition is to create a brand new comprehensive K-12 AI literacy program. So that's curriculum, hands-on activities, that's all project-based learning, uh, teacher training um, that we call responsible AI for computational action. And it is bringing together kind of these three big themes in a really new way. So of course, computational thinking, AI literacy and ethics, as well as design thinking and human-centered design. So we position the students as the designers of these kinds of technologies. So they are in this creative, critical thinking position from the get-go. So if we want kids to be able to create amazing things with AI, we got to give them the right tools, right? So fortunately, we're MIT. <laughs> We've developed some incredible programming platforms that are child and student friendly, things like App Inventor, things like Scratch. We've been now infusing that with these new advanced AI capabilities to give kids access to these tools and technologies. And with them, they're able to do things like not only program, you know, uh, interactives that run in their web browser, but also Android devices, Alexa smart speakers, and robot kits, right? So we're giving them the ability to kind of create skills and things that can actually run on these, these real world things, which is super exciting. And then we're bringing the right kinds of tools into these platforms that are super child friendly, student friendly, but also really creative and exciting. So I want to just play a video of just one of these kinds of extensions We've done, uh, we've created a custom version of um, a scratch programming platform. Um, and this set of blocks is all about allowing kids to program uh, using AI for gestural interfaces. Pose Blocks is a new toolkit for students to create body tracking and motion interactive projects while learning about artificial intelligence. AI systems like Connect Games, Snapchat augmented reality lenses, and Instagram AR filters are some of the most engaging ways students experience AI in their everyday lives. And many students have passions around sports and dance that we can use as entryways to AI concepts. The Pose Blocks Toolkit introduces a suite of block-based programming tools that students use to conceptualize, design, build, and reflect on interactive physical movement-based projects. To support this, we've developed a suite of new block-based coding extensions for our online editor, built on top of the open source Scratch programming library. A new Google Teachable Machine integration allows students to quickly train their own image, pose, or audio classifier models, and bring them into their own coding projects to build interactive AI-powered projects of their own devising. Here we're using Teachable Machine to train a new recycling detector, which can tell us whether we're holding glass, paper, or plastic. And since all model training and execution are done on the client side, and only these model weights are exported, student privacy is preserved. Now we take this model into our project and respond to the model's image detection. Looks like glass, looks like paper. This lets students make projects like these. Three more sets of new blocks allow students to create projects with hand, face, and body tracking machine learning models. These blocks allow you to track body parts, finger points, even face parts, and respond to expressions and emotions that are sensed. That allows projects like these. And these. You can make a spray painter with your fingers and your nose as the eraser. Here's a teachable machine project where a bunny runs around when you put bunny ears behind you. Here's one that detects when your posture is bad. You know, a really fun, creative, playful set of tools. We're targeting here upper elementary and middle schools who may not be experts at, at coding yet. And I just want to share with you a video of now uh, a middle schooler who using these tools can actually create a project, you know, of her own past. So mine is a book detector. It just um, tells you about the book and it rating. So if I did this one. Mm. Oh, that's so wow. cool. That's I like so that's cool. Right so this is amazing. So here's a middle schooler who's able to create 
an, a, an application basically where she can just show a book and the agent can tell you about it. And she did this within you know, a week long workshop. So again, really empowering tools, creative tools. So I wanna just talk through a little bit about the curriculum approach because I know there's a lot of teachers uh, listening in just to give them a little more sense of, of, of how we've designed these learning experiences. So each module typically happens over the period of, of a week and we've actually been designing virtual workshops across a number of curriculum to do this. So we obviously wanna introduce students to these core concepts in artificial intelligence. We use these through intuitive metaphors and interactive games so they kind of learn about the mechanics of these algorithms. We then create a lot of hands-on activities where they can go out and experience these things. They can start to see how these algorithms are used in the real world, even play around with it, give them a sense of what the state of the art is and how they're used. Then we also talk about the societal implications, both good and maybe not so good. And we do a lot of discussion around that. And then we empower kids with these tools so they can actually then apply their creativity and critical thinking to make a project using these tools, often positioned as helping someone or doing something for your community. So again, a computational action-oriented uh, action project. So going through a quick example now, we actually uh, introduced a curriculum this summer on a new machine learning, this is an advanced machine learning method called GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks. This is when AI can actually get creative, when it can produce new data that you would actually consider to be like, you know, visual art or music or, or other kinds of things we'll talk about. So we uh, use familiar metaphors, we have kids to play games, so they kind of understand how GANs work. Then we have them try out a bunch of things online that use GANs, so GANs can be used to create photorealistic faces of people who don't exist. Or you can kind of, you know, compose a photorealistic image or you can have it generate music. So, I mean, this is a really, you know, powerful, amazing technology. We often frame it around arts and expression because we want to be able to appeal to a lot of different kinds of kids through a lot of our different modules. We also have kids reflect upon these tools as we use them. So again, there's a lot of discussion uh, uh, around this. Then we talk about societal implication. And one of the important aspects of GANs is this ability to create deep fakes. So if you cue the video, I'll let you um, learn about defakes and how we engage students around that discussion. Our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. Former President Barack Obama, right? So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like, uh, I don't know, uh, Killmonger was right. Wrong. You see, I would never say these things, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. Comedian Jordan Peele actually produced this video to warn about the future of fake news. Um, so, you know, what, what, what happens when you, someone makes a video like this? What are some, some implications? What, how does this affect the real world? They could like show it to like, if it's something really bad, they could like frame someone for saying something that they didn't actually say. Um, they could also maybe like, if there's a president um, and they have, like maybe um, they could pretend like that the, they could make a video of something that the president said that wasn't actually real but fake and then maybe because of that people would start opposing and saying that they don't like the president. Right, you can kind of frame people, put you on negative lighting, make people say offensive things like a slur, you know, spread rumors around. There's a lot of, you know, negative things you can do with a deep fake. Right, so with any amazing new technology, there's wonderful things you can do. There's also some pretty, you know, upsetting things you can do. And it's important for kids to, to understand that. As a final project, it's a creative project. We actually have kids use GANs, tools we've developed to basically generate a story using GANs. So they create the artwork, they create the text trained on different kinds of styles like Harry Potter or Shakespeare or Dr. Seuss. And we have them reflect upon those stories and kind of the experience of working with GANs to produce something creative. So that's just a snapshot to give you a sense of what these kinds of uh, learning modules look like. Now we have been very busy creating uh, workshop formats, training teachers, all these kinds of things, both for in-person and now of course virtual formats. So for instance, this summer we were very, very busy. Uh, we actually collaborated with Amazon Future Engineer. They have this incredible network of teachers and Title I schools where we wanted to pilot four AI workshops we've been developing, things on conversational AI, the gestural interfaces you saw, uh, robotics, um, and the creative AI that you just saw, where we conducted uh, a series of eight total workshops. Each was a week long. We offered over 100 hours of curriculum time for kids. 
We train 28 teachers. We reach over 150 underserved students, um, all in this kind of you know new world of, of artificial intelligence. So you know, just to give you a little sense for the teachers out there, uh, what that looked like. Again, our graduate students create all the tools, the curriculum, the learning modules, the teacher training materials. So they are kind of the leaders uh, of these workshops. So from the teachers that we recruited, we would do a, a pre-work introduction of the module that they signed up for to do for the week. And then every day we followed this format where the, the, the main instruction was done through our MIT uh, graduate students where the teachers served as teaching assistants. And then we did a big debrief with the teachers every day where they gave a lot of feedback in terms of how they thought it went and engagement. And we'd actually take their inputs and we would make changes for the next day in the workshop. We could keep iterating and making it better and better and better. And then at the end of the full week, teachers were sent to survey where they could give us bigger feedback over the overall experience. And then the hope of course is they feel ready to bring this to the classroom on their own. So here's just some quotes. You know, of course it's the first time you do it, you're gonna get you know, all kinds of feedback. But overall, it was very, very successful. So teachers talked about they really appreciated how responsive we were to their feedback. They felt inspired. Their students were inspired. They both learned a lot. They thought this was a huge part of digital literacy. They loved the tools. They loved the amount of time kids had to be creative and to be critical, think critically about their projects. So overall, we feel we're really on, on the right track with this. Now, of course, this is the kickoff of Massachusetts STEM Week. So we got to talk about Massachusetts STEM Week. And uh, my group has been a big fan and supporter uh, where we have actually worked with I2 Learning to bring the first AI and ethics curriculum called How to Train Your Robot to Massachusetts STEM Week. So this is actually a photo taken the first time we offered it. I believe Lieutenant Governor is actually in this photo. It's a surprise visit where we offered uh, How to Train Your Robot as an in-person session. And actually a big reason why we did this for the summer workshops is so we could virtualize this curriculum to get ready for STEM week. So we've already mailed a lot of robots to kids across Massachusetts and beyond in order to do, uh, to do this curriculum with, with, with kids during Massachusetts STEM week. So it's game on. So to conclude again, you know, the theme of Massachusetts STEM week is, you know, see yourself in STEM. We've also been creating a lot of uh, learning modules around thinking about future careers in AI or how AI could be used in your future career. And we're now actually working on a series of videos where we are interviewing just amazing people across many different industries. And I hope you can appreciate from this video, diverse faces, diverse voices. So no matter what kind of kid you are, you can see someone who you can identify with and really see yourself in STEM. So this is something that's in the works and we'll be making it available. So just so everyone knows, everything I've talked about is on this website. It's called, it's aieducation.mit.edu. If you're a teacher, if you're a nonprofit, you're free to use these things uh, for free. Um, and if you're interested in working with us around outreach or dissemination, you can email us at aieducation.mit.edu. Um, we are really committed to try to get this out to all students in Massachusetts and the United States. So thank you so much. <laughs>